hello everyone. Um, my name is Christine Figener, as Monique has already introduced me as, and thank you so much for having me here today. I feel a little bit strange because I feel I'm talking to myself, but I'm hoping that somebody is listening, of course. Um, yeah, Monique already said that I am a marine conservation biologist that is mainly working with marine turtles in Central America. But unfortunately, over the years, pretty much ever since I started working with sea turtles, the sad byline of what I've been seeing in the field is ocean plastic pollution and the impact it has on our ocean wildlife. And so over the past five years, I've become very active in advocating against plastic pollution in general. And today I would just like to tell you a little bit about this massive and sometimes a little bit overwhelming pro problem that we're all facing as marine scientists. You know, we always talk about, oh yeah, we have a massive issue. So I'm sure all of you have heard about the gyres um, of plastic that are circulating pretty much in every major ocean. And if you just think about how much waste in general, plastic and non-plastic is generated, it's about 2.5 billion metric tons all around the world. And within those 2.5 billion metric tons, we have about 275 million metric tons that is plastic waste. So that is a huge amount of plastic waste. And if you think about how many people live close to the coast and just take out that chunk, then we're talking about about 100 million metric tons of coastal plastic waste that is produced. Of course, luckily, not all of that is actually ending up in the ocean, but it is still a massive number. We're still looking at 8 million metric tons of plastic that goes into our oceans every single year. And if we look at the different objects, probably all objects that you have been using sometime during your life. So we have plastic bags that take about, you know, the flimsy kind of take about 20 years to kind of break down into different parts, coffee cups about 30 years. But if you look, for example, at disposable diapers or even a, just a plastic water bottle, it's 450 years to 500 years. And what all of those objects have in common is that these are all objects that we are only using maybe for a few seconds, a few minutes, and then we throw them out. And it is in no way in relation to how long they will still continue to exist after we've been using them. So yeah, so these are the top 10 items that are found on the beach every year. And you will see most of them are actually, you know, in the category of single use plastics. So we have food wrappers, straws and steers, forks, knives, spoons, uh, all the, you know, replacement uh, silverware, uh, plastic beverage bottles, which means the PET bottles, especially the plastic bottle caps grocery bags and other plastic bags, plastic lids, and so on. So you can see it is a massive problem. And like I said, it's the identifiable objects, right? Because I don't know if any one of you has participated in a beach cleanup. A lot of the plastic that we're finding on, on the beach are actually, you know, little charts of plastic, which it's really difficult to tell where they came from in the first place. We always talk about the ocean, but in the end, it is affecting us as humans as well, our health, because we are eating fish and seafood from, from the ocean, and we are also ingesting plastics. We know that already from seafood, we are ingesting the toxins of plastic in them. And we are only starting to understand what those chemicals that the plastics release, as well as the plastic itself, are actually doing to our health, because we have some ideas, there's some studies that have started to be conducted. So we know, for example, that brain development is affected by different chemicals um, that actually IQs have dropped because of that. And more recently, though, um, in recent years in general, we have found that our gut flora, so the bacteria that lives in our intestine, or the bacteria that live in our intestines, are super important for our health in general. So an unhealthy gut has actually been linked to depression, uh, any kind of other mental disorders, to chronic disease such as Crohn and other, uh, even arthritis, um, cancers, of course. And if you don't think about, if we now also having this, you know, the problem with the plastic that is thrown into this whole mix, 
I think we're only scratching the surface of what plastic does to us humans as well. So if you don't care about the ocean, if you don't care about the animals, you should at least care about your own health and see that you are trying to reduce the use of plastics in your everyday life. My suggestion and my general message is that, you know, it's great that we're all trying to clean up our oceans. I mean, I'm out there myself every, almost well, during the nesting season, almost every day, we are trying to clean up parts of the beach. And once we, you know, one time through, we're going back and start cleaning again because it's kind of this never ending story. But this is not enough. But the other thing that is super important is we need to turn the tap off. We need to turn the tap off on plastics because, I mean, you wouldn't start mopping off your floor from, a, you know, a bathing tap that is running over. You would actually first turn off the tap of that water before you start mopping, right? And this is what we have to do with plastic. So we need to reduce the production of virgin plastics and we need to reduce our consumption. And with that, I thank you all for your attention. I hope I've given you some ideas of how you can also help to change the world a little bit. Because always remember, it's just one straw, say 8 billion people. And it's really not about being perfectly plastic free. It's really what we need is millions of people that do it imperfectly. Thank you.